In this tutorial, we are going to conduct a logistic regression. In a logistic regression, we try to predict a binary categorical variable. And so we are taking a data set from the Andy Field text, and we see here that we are trying to predict whether someone was cured or not. It's a yes or no, and our independent variables here are whether they received an intervention or not, which is a, another categorical variable, and then also the duration of their condition, which is a continuous variable. And so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to Analyze, Regression, and Binary Logistic. Okay, so we want to predict whether somebody was cured or not. So we're going to put that over in the dependent section, and then we're going to put our other two predictor variables in right here as our covariates. Now, even though intervention is a categorical variable, because there are only two levels of that categorical variable, either they got it or they didn't, we actually don't need to dummy code it, so we don't need to go into categorical at this time. Okay, and so what we're going to do is go to options, and we're going to run the Hosmer, let me show goodness of fit, and that will actually help us test one of our assumptions, and one of our assumptions is a linear relationship between the predictor variables and the logit of the dependent variable, and so in order to test this assumption we're going to run this statistic, and that's it there, and we go ahead. Okay, so the first thing that you're going to see, you see that they talk about how many cases we have, um, and how the dependent variable is coded, 0 or 1, not cured or cured. And then you come to your block 0, which is your beginning block, and this is your baseline. And, and so the baseline in logistic regression is where they actually take whatever occurred more frequently. So if you look here, um, people being cured occurred more frequently. That's what the baseline does is they predict that everybody was cured. Whatever whatever level occurred more frequently. And you see that when they did that, they actually they were correct 57.5% of the time. So we're going to go down here. It shows us it shows us the non-significance of the wall statistic and it also shows us that the variable is not in the equation here. So now we're going to go to our block 1 where it actually enters our variables. So the first thing you'll notice is our chi-square and what this does is this actually does a comparison of our, of our zero block and it runs a chi-square between the zero block negative 2 LL and our block 1 negative 2 LL and it's looking for a difference, right? We would hope that there would be a difference between our zero block, which just predicted that it was everybody was cured, and our block 1, which used predictions based on our independent variables. And you see here that there is a significant difference, so that's good. Now we're going to go down and we're going to look at our negative 2 LL. And what we see here is that it's actually pretty high. One of the things we want for the negative 2 LL is we would want it to be low, but it's pretty high. We also notice that our Cox and Snell and our Nagelkirchy are both um, not very close to 1, which is something else that we would want. So those are things to consider. Yes, we have a significant model, but um, it may not actually be that big of a change. So we're going to come down and we see our Hosmer and Lemma show. And again, this is to test for the assumption of linearity of the relationship between the predictors and the logit of the dependent variable and we don't want it to be significant which is what we have here so that's awesome so we have met that assumption now we're going to look at the classification table and this basically tells us how well the model predicts, predicts if people are cured or not and so here it was a little bit better it was 64.6 percent as opposed to um, our zero block which was 57 and a half percent so it was a little bit better but not that much um, and so again, we're going to go then and look at our wall statistic. It tells us if our, our, our B coefficient is significantly different than zero. And we see here that there is a significant difference for intervention. So whether they received an intervention or not, there is not a significant difference here for duration. So the duration of the condition um, is not a significant predictor here. And so if we want to look at effect side, we would actually look at our exponentiated um, B, which is our odds ratio. And so what we would do here is we would look and see you can subtract 1 and multiple, multiply it times 100 to get the percentage. And if we did that, you would actually see it's very large that if you received an intervention, you were 243% more likely to be cured. When you're looking at these, you know, if it's, if it's, if 
if it's above one, then it, that it increases the likelihood. As the predictor increases, the odds of the outcome occurring increase. And if the number is below one, as the predictor increases, the odds of the outcome decrease. So there's a negative relationship there. So overall, we see that intervention makes a, a large difference, and that helps increase our ability to predict whether somebody was cured or not, but not that much. So something to consider regarding our model, perhaps there are other factors that can increase our ability to predict whether somebody is cured or not.